This is a video on uh, 40 books on the history of religion that I've been reading and patterns among hundreds of religions that are mentioned in those books. I want to summarize those patterns because none of the books summarizes them all. And I think it's kind of useful to have a place where somebody summarizes what the 40 books all notice. I'm writing a book called Saving Saviors, and I won't deal with that, but I will deal with the six patterns I notice. The first pattern is that there's great value. I found 64 practices that are shared by almost every religion. And there's great value in those practices today, uh, whether you're a believer of the religion or not. The practices have great value. They work. And uh, prayer, for example, it, uh, works. It's an appeal outside of the self for an authority, outside of the self for changing the self. Um, however, the beliefs of all of these religions are generally quite harmful and a bad social theory. And uh, so you find things like ancient books that say pages and pages about how God is going to torture prostitutes and not a single word about how God is going to torture the gangsters who beat up the women, threaten their families, steal them away and sell them uh, to make money and force them into prostitution. And so, you know, gods that didn't go to high school would uh, punish the uh, women and not punish the gangsters. And so the fact that not a word in any of these books about the gangsters uh, just indicates ignorance on the part of these gods or bad social theory on their part. And, and you would expect that from a god that didn't graduate from high school. Number two, um, every one of these religions has got a figure of some sort of an authority outside the self for changing the self. And we all need that because we can't manage ourselves by ourselves at times. It's like if I'm a bad manager of myself and then I ask myself to manage myself out of that, I'm asking the flawed manager that created the problem to get rid of the problem. It's very difficult. And so we all need an authority outside of the self that's pure and uh, strong and perfect to uh, appeal to, to help us improve ourselves in ways that we know that we can't help us because we're a bad manager of ourselves. And this turns out this principle is shared by modern therapies, almost all of them, and by the training that performing artists go through. And so you find ancient religions performing arts training and modern therapies all have the same principle of self-transformation. If you're interested in the principle shared by them all, and it amazed me that they all have the same one, read Robert Kagan's book called In Over Our Heads. Number three, uh, religions that specialize goodness in a special Sabbath day tend to foster more bad behavior during the rest of the week. And I think this has to do with they didn't understand the brain, brain modules, how they work. And so they didn't understand that people would use the forgiveness and the good feeling they get on that special day to wash away any guilt they have for all the bad stuff they do. And then they, then they feel like doing bad stuff another six days because they know they're going to feel good again another week from now. And so you really do find that sociologists have found measurable uh, amounts of greater evil being done and unfairness being done by people who do specialized goodness on a Sabbath day. Number four, um, uh, you have agricultural societies that tend to be pantheistic and uh, everything is sacred. And uh, other people's gods nearby, neighbors' gods, are just another way to get to the same place. And they're not threatened by that. And then you have nomad societies where uh, nothing is sacred, everything is bad. And uh, other people's gods are threats, kill them. A kind of adolescent male boy anger, kill people who don't believe what I believe because I want to be right because I got nothing going for me. As a young male, you don't. You're at the bottom of the hierarchy and you feel useless. And so uh, you want to have uh, be righter than everybody because you don't have power and you don't have authority. And it's going to take 20 years for you to get that in the male hierarchy of the world. But the fifth one is that each religion is a rather good fix for the flaws in the culture it grew up in. And the sixth one is each religion is a rather good fix for the flaws of the religions it grew up in. And so uh, Islam corrects flaws in Christianity quite correctly. And Christianity corrects flaws in Roman, ancient Roman culture quite correctly. Unfortunately, if you're uh, Roman, ancient Roman, uh, Christianity is a great help for your values but, and way of living. But if you're not 2,000 years old and you're not in Rome, then those fixes aren't going to match what you need today. But I'm not interested in those implications. I'm more interested in um, 